folks. Well, I've been using this camera for a few months now. It's the ASI 2600MC Pro one-shot colour camera and I thought I'd share my experiences of it with you. My name's Dr Ray and welcome to Astrogadge. Before going on to talk about the 2600MC Pro, a little bit about what I was using before I acquired it. Like a lot of people, I started off uh, in astrophotography using a DSLR and again, like a lot of people, I, I quickly started to realise what the limitations of doing so were, particularly uh, in respect of uh, it being a non-cool kind of camera. The first dedicated astronomical camera I bought and still have and still like very much is this this one here it's the Attic 460EX monochrome camera so I went from using a, a obviously a, a colour one shot camera DSLR to shooting uh, mono using filters and you can see I've got this kitted out with a, a filter wheel an automated filter wheel here and also uh, use an off-axis uh, guider. This is a, a cooled sensor. It's um, an, an ICX614, I believe. Uh, it's 12.49 by 9.7 millimeter uh, dimensions. It has 4.54 by 4.54 micron uh, pixels in it. It has a really, really low read noise and it's very, very sensitive and it gives great results. Uh, you can see um, an, an example of, of the results that this thing gives at the beginning of the video uh, with a picture of the bubble nebula. That was taken this camera using narrowband filters. It's an excellent camera, like I say. It's, it's showing its age now. It's, it's um, almost 10 year old. It's a 6.1 megapixel camera. It's 16 bits. I'll come a bit onto a bit more about bits in a minute, but yeah, it's a it's a very good camera, and um, I still use it on occasion. But I, I decided to go on uh, and switch and see how I got on with uh, one-shot color cameras uh, for lots of reasons. Uh, I think I mentioned in my video before, but again, we'll touch on that later. Uh, I'm what I'm not going to do. What I'm not going to do is is, is get into any uh, particular. Uh, detail on the whole mono versus OSC debate uh, but we'll, we'll kind of touch on that in a bit. Uh, before I bought this camera, the 2600, uh, I used the ASI 533 one shot colour camera and it, it was a really very good, very very good camera, cool camera again by ZWO. It had uh, a square sensor the sensor uh, was a it's it's, it's a IMX 533 9 megapixel camera. Uh, again, in, in um, a couple of my videos, you can see see this this thing in action. And again, very very good camera. Um, it was only a 14 bit camera uh, compared to this, which is a 16 true 16 bit camera. And again, I'll go into that in a bit. Whilst I did like the uh, 533, I, I find it a bit limiting. I find the, the, the square sensor a little bit limiting. Um, and so I thought I'd, I'd upgrade to, to this, this 2600 uh, purely and simply uh, because of its specs. So I'll briefly go through the, the specs of, of this, this, this camera. Uh, if, you, if you want to get any more detail on that then just simply go to the, the, the website of a vendor that sells it but uh, the first thing obviously as I said is it has a larger sensor than the uh, 533 it has an APS-C 
sensor, crop sensor. Like the ASI-533, uh, this camera, in fact, just like all of the ASI range, has a CMOS sensor. And the sensor is the IMX, Sony IMX 571, and there are other cameras, uh, particularly made by Altair Astro and QHY, that use this particular sensor. Much as it pains me to buy all my equipment from one particular manufacturer, it kind of goes against the grain of this kind of Apple philosophy thing, but the reason I went for the ASI uh, camera with that sensor is, is purely and simply because I use it with a dual band, narrow band filter uh, and an off axis guider which ASI have made or manufactured so that when you use this particular combination with this camera you get the 55mm back focus which I need because I use refractors with field flatteners and reducers. So it just made sense and simplicity compared to the other manufacturers to, to use uh, this product with this with minimal fuss and minimal faff particularly uh, as I say in trying to get back focus it's all kind of been made with, it, with that view and as I say if, if you don't use refractors it's not so much of an issue. Other things I, sh I should mention actually as well is that this comes with a built-in um, window heater so it, it prevent any form of condensation or frost building up on the sensor or, or its window and it also has uh, a tilt compensation ring here so if you are getting tilts in your optical chain um, you can adjust it using the screws here so uh, it comes with that. Uh, for me what was one of the more attractive things about this camera and indeed the 533 was the fact that there is zero amp glow or, or the claim there is zero amp glow and in fact um, I'll just uh, put up a couple of shots now of some darks I took. This is a, a single uh, dark subframe. It's taken at uh, 15, minus 15 degrees centigrade, 30 seconds. Uh, this one is taken at 240 seconds, again at minus 15. Uh, both have used what's called the, the, the lowest read noise function which is a gain of 100 uh, and the driver of this camera and again you can see that the, 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 there is no amp glow. The other big difference for this camera compared to the 533 as I said is it's a 16-bit camera true 16-bit camera and what that means is as a, a higher tonal range and high dynamic range than the 533 to actually quantify what the difference between a 14-bit and 16-bit camera, it's pretty simple. It's just a little bit of basic math. Uh, in the case of a 16-bit camera like this, what you do is you take 2 and raise it to the power of 16. And that gives you 65,536 different shades of grey that it can actually resolve. In the case of a 14-bit camera, then a similar calculation. It's 2 raised to the power of 14, which give you 16,384 shades of grey which it can resolve. So in other words, there's a four times difference between this and the 533 in terms of the tones, colour tones it can resolve, which in theory means it can show much more natural transitions in colour and in black and white than the 533. MY BRAIN HURTS! <laughs> Alright, <laughs> it might be a bit complicated if you're not into maths, but just look at it simply with this diagram. There are a couple of things, however, that you need to be aware about with this camera. The first is uh, that it, it produces an awful lot of data. The, f the file sizes that are downloaded are about 51 megabytes compared to the 533 which is about 17 megabytes. 
that's quite a lot of data uh, to be coming down uh, into, for example, a laptop. So you need to make sure that your storage is uh, up to receiving such a quite a lot of data, um, particularly uh, if, you, if you're uh, going for lots and lots of subs. The second thing is is to make sure that you use a high quality USB 3 cable when you're attaching this to your image capture device. There's one particular issue I had one night. Uh, I'd taken about 70 subs and when I was processing I uh, found that three out of that 70 odd or whatever it was it took at the time, three, three of these subframes had uh, data missing. Uh, you can see now, uh, uh, you can see here that there's a big huge band of nothing occurring randomly in three of uh, three of the, the subframes. So I thought, oh. my initial thought was, oh God, there's something wrong with the camera. Uh, so I, I contacted the vendor uh, and also contacted um, ZWO themselves and I got pretty prompt answers uh, and what was nice about it is their answers uh, were, were both the same and the solution was to make sure that you do not use a hub uh, with this camera and what I was doing is I was using the hub on the mount and secondly uh, as, as I just said to you uh, to, to make sure that you use a good quality USB 3 cable of, a, of the recommended length specification uh, and the other uh, solution was if that didn't work was to lower the USB traffic function on the driver itself well I, I was only using the hub on the mount because I had it wired that way for the attic so I did as they said I, I bought a very very uh, good quality USB 3 cable and connected it directly to my laptop and I have never had an issue with that since. So uh, that's just something to be aware of. Um, the thing is that the, the camera itself has uh, a, an integrated hub here. So when I had to reconfigure the cables it was relatively easy to connect the, the focuser and the guiding camera via the hub here. And as I say, I have had no difficulty uh, or, or a repeat of that, that particular incident. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. The other thing is, is I've read is that in some instances people have said that they found oil or oil residues on the sensor. Speaking to the, the vendor before I bought this uh, in the UK, uh, they maintain that they've never seen any or had any reports of that occurring uh, in any of the, the batches that they've sold. So it might have been a, an initial batch problem, I, I don't know, but uh, I can certainly say I've never uh, encountered that problem with this particular unit. Although it looks quite a big camera, I sometimes refer to it as a holy hand grenade of Antioch. Uh, <laughs> it's only uh, 0.7, well, 700 grams, which uh, isn't that heavy really. Uh, I haven't found any issues at all uh, being able to balance uh, either the small focal length or the larger focal length refractors I have. I think one of the nicest things, of, well for me at least, one of the nicest things about this camera is it's actually it's really good fun to use. It's, it's really simple to use. Uh, you kind of, to use an analogy, plug and play plug and play with it. It's, it's as simple as that. The uh, post-processing, um, not just with this but with one-shot colour cameras, having been used to dealing with uh, monochrome and narrowband filter imaging, um, was a little bit of a learning curve but um, again it hasn't been a huge problem. That's not to say I'm still not learning, of course I'm still learning but Well folks, to, to summarise my thoughts on this camera, I guess the question would be is why would you go from mono filter astrophotography to one shot colour cameras? And the answer as I've said before in the previous video is quite simply 
the climate where I live. It's incredibly inconsistent to say the least. I was finding with mono filter astrophotography that it was taking me sometimes weeks, uh, if not months, to get a complete decent data set. And during that time, of course, in different nights, you're going to get slightly different sky conditions, uh, which is a bit of a nightmare when you come to processing because you find in different nights and the data you've got from different nights, the gradients are different and that. That's just <laughs> creates all sorts of problems. I find these constraints using the mono camera very frustrating. I think the new generation of one-shot colour CMOS chips, such as used in the ASI 2600 and other manufacturers who use that sensor, um, are giving mono sensors a good run for the money at the moment. Um, so, you know, it, I think the gap between between these two methods is closing. And I have to say, in my experience, uh, particularly with LRGB imaging uh, with broadband objects and the sky conditions that I have, I'm really pushed to see any real difference in practical terms uh, from uh, the mono imaging. Narrowband imaging of course is a different story. However, when you couple these new cameras with the, the latest generation of sensors with filters such as the L-Extreme, then I think some of the images you're getting from that are extremely good. You, you go online and you see what people are achieving using these combinations and you have to think, well, given the constraints I've got, you know, there's a theoretical and a practical. What am I going to go for? I've certainly not given up on mono imaging using narrowband and broadband filters, but I would need to get a few good consistent nights in a row for me, to, for, for me to use that method of imaging now. I'm well aware of the arguments regarding mono versus one-shot colour imaging and, and, and it's a debate I really don't want to get into here. In my opinion, you have to look at your own personal restraints, whether that's climate, weather, budget, time, and figure out what it is that you want to achieve. And I think that's more important than being completely driven by the theoretical differences between them. So in other words, whatever works for you in your particular circumstances is going to be best for you. If you do decide to go down the one-shot colour camera route, then in my opinion, you could do a lot worse than buying the 2600 MC Pro. It's a very good, very sensitive camera, zero amp glow, and above all, it's really good fun to use. Well, folks, that's it for this session. I hope it's been of interest to you. I hope um, it's been informative. I hope you've enjoyed it. And thanks so much for watching. Uh, and if you do like the content, please feel free to press the subscribe button and you'll get a heads up in any future content that I may publish. But again, until the next time, thanks again for watching and keep watching the skies. Watch the skies everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the skies.